Hello, week 25 at home. We are talking about our eyes today. Our eyes. Yes, our eyes. They're in our school. As you know, you have a school, your head in the eye socket area right there. Those are your eyes. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about a lot of the names and stuff, kind of why they're there. Um, first thing is they're as big as a ping pong ball. The eyelid, which you have, helps protect the front part of your eye. The lid helps keep the eye clean, moist by opening and shutting several times. If your eyes are ever dry, close your eyes. That's simple. Um, that's called blinking. It's uh, both a voluntary and involuntary, which means you don't notice you're blinking, but and you do notice you're blinking. So it's voluntary and vo voluntary. The eyelid has great reflexes, which are automatic. So they, they protect the eye. When you step into a bright light, the eye squeezes you together to slowly open up. And if you flutter your fingers close to your eyes, they'll start to blink a little bit. So they kind of just help protect your eye. The eyelids help protect your eye, keep things out, keep dirt out. There you go. Um, the white part of your eye, as you can see your eye, Mr. Briggs's, there's white on each side. That is called the scylara, scylara. And it is a bit of a tough material and it has an important job covering most of the eyeball. Think of it as your eyeball's outer coat. Look very closely at the white of the eye and you'll see lines that look like tiny pink threads. They are the blood vessels, these tiny tubes that deliver blood to the uh, sclera. The cornea, a transparent dome, sits on the front of the colored part of the eye. The cornea helps the eye focus on light as it makes it through, as light makes its way through. It is very important to the eye, but you can hardly see it because it's made of a clear tissue, like clear glass. The cornea gives your eye a clear window to view the world. Ah, the iris. The iris is the colorful part of your eye. Mr. Briggs has brown eyes, brown iris. Now, some people have different colors. My wife has blue eyes. My daughter has brown, and my other daughter has blue. So it's all over the place, eyes. Some of you guys have green eyes, hazel eyes. There you go. This allows the iris to control how much light goes in. Oh, no, I'm talking talk about that. My goodness. I'm all over the place right now. So... The anterior chain, oh, uh, not the anterior chain. I told you there's tons of parts of these, so I'm trying to go over the ones that are good. Let's see here. Let's go to this one of the facts that come up. Eye facts. Eyes are very similar to cameras. Your eyes take pictures of the world. They send them to your brain so you can kind of figure out what's going on. Now, we've talked about the sclera. This is a white part of your eye. It covers the entire outside of your eyeball except the cornea. The iris, what we just talked about, that's the colored part of your eye. This is not loading, my friends. I'm sorry. The pupil. This is a sort of hole in the middle of the iris. It lets light into your eye and gets a very small and bright lights. So if you're looking at this picture here, and if you can't see a really good visual because it's small on your screen, you can click the picture right by video, and it will expand. And you'll be on YouTube, and you can see me doing this. So you kind of see over here where we have our iris, the oh, – there you go. Scalara, the white, the focal points, the cornea. The cornea is a clear layer covering the front of the eye. It focuses the light that comes into your eye to make sure the eye records clear images. So now we have our iris, we have our cornea in here. Oh my, the eye is pretty cool. This, the lens helps the cornea focus light. It also becomes thicker for close objects and thinner for far away. So focusing on that, there you are. So here's another cool picture of the eye. Like I said, there are tons of stuff to go over about the eye. Look at all these words that I'm not even going to tell you about. That's why I have the three links for you that you can go about them. So we got tons of stuff there. Let's go back to this one. Now, here we are, the rods. Rods and cones process the light to give you the total picture. So you have things inside of you to get the, the picture in those eyes. Uh, and they help correct the fuzziness. And if they are still fuzzy, what are some things kids and adults wear? Glasses. Glasses help the eyes focus images correctly on the retina and allow someone to see clearly. As adults like Mr. Briggs get older, their eyes lose the ability to focus well. And they often need glasses to see things that are close or far away. Most older people, you know, like your grandparents, might wear glasses. My mom and dad have worn glasses my entire life. I never have. Just the way the body is. Now, when we think of all those things you're seeing, they start to have to be processed. So they get processed and you think about those in the brain. But how do they get there? The optic nerve. 
as is the great messenger. It kind of is the one that just sends that information. The rods and cones change the colors and the optic nerve helps send it there. So the optic nerve is a high speed telephone line connecting the eye to the brain. When you see an image, your eye telephones their, your brain with a report. So I see something like a pencil. I look at it and I go, oh, that's a pencil. So you start to learn these things. Your brain learns it. So when your eye sees it, it can adapt and it's attackable. I know what that is. Also a very good in sporting events like we're doing. If you're throwing, catching, hitting things, if your eyes are closed, you're not seeing anything, but eyes are open. You can process everything. So some things to do with your eyes. Your eyes do some great things for you. So what can you do for your eyes? Wear protective goggles in cl classes where debris or chemicals go flying, like a wood shop, metal shop, science lab, or sometimes even art class. If you're painting, there's all always good reasons to wear eye guards. Now, when you're swimming, you want to keep your eyes open underwater. That's a great way because that chlorine water and maybe the ocean water, salt water, that just hurts your eyes a lot. Where I practice from playing racquetball, hockey, skiing, or any other sports, if I'm going to go skiing, I want to be able to see that that sun is so bright on the snow and it just shines up and it hits your eyes and you're skiing like this. So you want to have goggles on so you can see. Um, hockey, well, you don't want a hockey puck to your eyeball. That's no fun. Um, wear sunglasses. Mr. Briggs wears sunglasses a lot. Too much light can damage your eyes and cause vision problems later in life. For instance, a lens could get cloudy, causing a cataract. A cataract prevents light from reaching the retina and makes it difficult to see. So cataract is a disease that happens in your eyes that makes you so your eyes are open, but you still can't see anything. So you slowly start to lose your vision. It happens with animals a lot as well. Older animals, obviously. So we've got some information on that. we got three videos to watch. We just talked about the optic nerve. Go do that. This is week 25, and it's also conference week. So good luck. See you guys next time.